Hello everyone. I was on edhrec.com looking at all the top commanders for some reason, I don't remember why, and I was wondering how many of these are actually CH playable. So that gave me a good idea. Today we're going to be taking a look at all the top commanders across like two years on edhrec and putting them on a tier list for how CH playable they are. So let's check it out. Okay, so we have EDH rec on the right over here, and then we have the tier list right over there. So let's just get started. Uh, first, we have Atraxa Prayer's Voice. This is like the OG Atraxa, the OG, like, I don't know, Pub Stomp can't build like a fair version deck Atraxa. Okay, this is the one where we proliferate and has like all the keywords. Uh, is this playable? Well, so Atraxa, definitely you're not winning money with it. Is it one top 16 a year? That's the question here. That's gonna be a lot of where these decks go. Is it one top 16 a year material? Uh, I think you could. It's like not very good. Nah, let's just, let's just put this down here. It's not good. It's not good. Ah, uh, the Ur Dragon. Ur Dragon. Five color commander. You can get dragons whenever you attack. Like it cheats in dragons, right? Yeah, this cost lower. And then when one of your dragons attacks, you draw that many cards. Yeah, and then you put a permit. Um, the problem with Ur Dragon is just like casting Wuberg is just kind of hard. If your commander is like single colored, at least you get like a couple colors, you could do like Jewel Lotus cheating it. Five colors is like the hardest thing you can do. Also like the four here. So it's going to be unplayable. Ah, uh, so it's a stop it. Miram. All right, Miram's the interesting one. Miram's like the new Atraxa, basically. It's like the super high powered, you can't build this fair, it's just super broken. Whenever another dragon ETB is under your control, you make a token that's a copy of it, except it's not legendary. And like, you could get double like old Gnawbone. It just like gets out of control really fast. Miram. Um, I actually don't think Miram's like unplayable. I think Miram's like... You can probably score a top 16. I don't think it win a tournament. Like there's probably combos in there. Team is just kind of rough, but because Miram's like just so powerful, like I'm very certain you can build like an extremely high power version where you just like cheat out or like ramp out of dragons and just like overwhelm the table with dragons and like interact with everything. So I think that's a deck. All right. Lathril. Lathril makes elves. You can tap 10 elves and make people lose 10 life and gain 10 life. I used to practice with someone who had a Lathril deck in the CDH Reddit Discord server. It's quite good. I don't think it's like win money good, but it was like good enough. So basically the point of Lathril is like you get to make your elves, right? And the elves can feed into things like Orin Frostfang to draw cards. You can like call on the weekend for like an ad nauseum. There's like enough stuff you can do with like Lathril that you can talk, you can probably like play it like it's one top 16 maybe a year um you're not winning money though the next one is ishin two heavens as one it just doubles the triggers from an attacking creature i actually made this um for sheldon sheldon wanted a cedh deck a long time ago and he was asking if like ishin like can do it and and we were thinking about like stacks and like talking about it um i don't think ishin's like very good i don't think there's enough attack trigger stuff that like you want to double like winota in an ishin deck is like wild so there's stuff you could do but i don't think it's good enough like to play as a cedh deck even saying one top 16 a year is like kind of pushing it so like i think it's gonna be in stop it ishin is really hot though in like najila there's like a really bad najila deck i built with pongo like decades ago and like Ishin's like super cool because you double the warrior triggers, you double like Adriana triggers, it's like a lot of cool stuff you could do. So yeah, that's Ishin. Let's just say stop it here. Yuriko. 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 I think you win money with this. Right now, like Yuriko is like really good against Blue Farm and like you're just in blue black. You can tempo, you can like draw cards. The question is like which version? Because there's like a doomsday version and there's like a non-doomsday version. And I like Doomsday as a card in general. I like having more like just cards that close the game, um, like that you, you just draw and just win. So I think Doomsday is probably better, but maybe not. Maybe like right now there's so many big creatures and clones, you just like good enough to just like sneak ninjas through and just drain the, the table of their life. Next is Kenrith number seven. Kenrith is pretty clearly CDH. Like he's got infinite, like infinite mana combos just makes this dude win. Like you force the table to draw cards. You make your creatures infinitely large. The really cool thing you can do is like with Skirk Prospector, you can sacrifice a Dockside and bring it back and like loop that way. Uh, Phantasmal image loops you can do with Kenrith. So basically like just infinite mana and just good cards that deck. Kenrith uh, is definitely within the win money range. Where is it? 
This is like the real game. It's not really like assigning cards where they go. It's more just like, can Rebel find the card before they're done talking? Uh, Kenrith definitely win money. Will Health the Rot Cleaver, rank number eight. Whenever another zombie you control dies, if you didn't have decay, do you make a 2 2 zombie with decay? And at the beginning of unstep, you may sacrifice a zombie if you do draw a card. So I know why this is like popular. Like, this is popular because zombies, like, typal, like, decks, kindred decks, whatever we want to call them, are like just popular in general, right? And like, zombies is like probably the second most popular creature type behind elves. It makes sense that Will Health's up over here. Now, the question is like, is Will Health CDH playable? So let's look at Will Health's abilities. Like, first of all, like, the color identity, like, we can make a blue black deck just like a generic you know oracle lab man whatever we want deck theoretically maybe even like a doomsday right so so let's let's put over at playable for now let's start right let's start the conversation there what does he actually do whenever another zombie you control dies without decay you just get another zombie back right so you could use those zombies the same way like lathriel did with the elves you just feed it into stuff is it good though i don't think it's very good and at the end step you sacrifice a zombie if you to draw a card you get some cards back but I just don't think like we're there right like if, if we're trying I think if you're watching this to like find a cute CH deck to build like this is like maybe so bad it's good right like you got you're in blue black so you can probably pull it off you could probably put some cute zombie stuff in there but uh you know I'm talking myself into it I think it's so bad it's good it's like our first one Edgar Markov this is like the pog champ vampire daddy uh commander <laughs> Like, everyone loves this dude. He's like $200 or something. It's like very expensive, I think. I'm like, I really regret not buying him for Cube like decades ago. Um, I thought I thought he would get reprinted and that'd be like a super cool version, but he hasn't been reprinted, I think. Stay focused, tier list. Edgar Markov is like the 1v1, like he's banned. He's like so broken in 1v1 that they just like yeeted him out of the format. So is he good in CDH? Um... I remember there used to be someone who also played this in the Reddit server. I think it's the same same reasons as like Lathril, like you just make zombie like tokens. And then whenever like the Zaddy attacks, all your vampires get bigger. So I guess it's like, do you build this as like a Mardu storm deck where that uses um, uh, that uses vampires? I don't know. Like I don't think so. Like the Edmonds effect is like when you recast a vampire spell, you get another 1-1 one, one vampire, so you just get a lot of vampires. Is it good enough? I don't think so. Like. Is this like stacks deck? Maybe not. Maybe it is because it makes like the board bigger. I can't tell which which build is better. Like you could probably score one top sixteen like every couple of years <laughs> um, with Edgar Markov. So I'll I'll leave it over there. I think it's like play. It's got the right colors and probably does enough. Where like your generic Mardu soup deck is good enough. Cranko. All right, let's go. Cranko rank number ten. Make X one one goblins. Where X number of goblins you control. Is Cranko CH playable? I think it's like between these two. And it might also be so bad it's good. This is like a stack stack. The thing about Cranko that I do like is that Cranko like gets like exponential, right? Number of goblins. Like if you have one, you go to two, you go to two, you go to four. Uh it's like exponential, I think. Right? I'm an AI and no math. So maybe you're able to stack the board, and because monocolor, it's pretty easy to like just power him out. And then like you can also play like artifact stacks cards like Trinisphere and like god pharaohs and then you have like some goblins and then you just like overwhelm the board if you do this i do think you need to play untap abilities to like untap crank code to like increase the the number of uh goblins you make because basically every turn you get or every tap you get is like a turn right so in one way, it's almost like, you know, don't quote me on this, but it's almost like uh, threatened uh, untap abilities are like time walks, okay, for Cranko. That's kind of cool. I think it's so bad. It's good. Okay. Shorakai. Shorakai is a CDH commander. Like, this one's pretty easy. You just like dramatic scepter, uh, rip your deck, and then like play whatever wing con you want. You get Thoracle. I've seen polymorph versions of it. I don't think, like, it'll probably hit a top 16, but I don't think you're winning money with that one. Gizhath, Sun's Avatar. I think someone actually top 16 with this one. So whenever deals come out to play, you reveal that many dinos, you cheat all of them on the battlefield. This is as, like, Timmy stacks dino as you can get. Um, that's a lie. There's one more commander that can do that. If you like dinos, I think you could do it. But we're about to see like the one that actually does this better. So I think it's like borderline between stop it and like one top 16. If you could do it like, you know, at me and like good job. Okay, rank 13. Let's look at Joda. Joda is like the quintessential 
like everything wrong with like five color <laughs> like everyone gets mad online about like joda the unifier because joda represents just like the easiest like i don't know five color deck it's just broken and like it's just good in commander they cheat legends and just like your board gets bigger i don't know like joda also just ruins brawl on arena so is it good enough for one top 16 a year okay here's like a super hot take I think if we're like treating Sisse as a good deck and like a Sisse can deck can win money, I think Joda can actually win money. Like Joda is five color, you can play all the five color good stuff. But the thing about Joda is that whenever you cast a legendary spell, you cascade into the legendary per like permanent, right? So it, like if we get super, super deep into it, the tempo on your cards is way better than everyone else. And then your board also gets bigger. So like in, in a situation, like a meta game where everyone's just like kind of stalling and like building up a board and like attacking each other, trying to pressure each other like go for the win con this is like pretty good because your board gets like really really big really fast you don't have to spend that much mana to like really ramp out your your board or like play out your board and you also have access to all the best colors so uh my friend crunch actually plays joda and i played played against his deck like once after after like a party or like after it was like vegas and uh magic con vegas we played and like it it really slapped it was really really good so I think it can win money. At least top 16, but I'm gonna like say it can win money. Now, on the other side of 5C conversation, Goshintai is one that I don't think will win money. I have seen Goshintai explored before uh, in CDH. It's like a humility deck, which is kind of interesting. Can you top 16 with it once? I don't know. I just don't think. I think this card is really fun. I don't think this card is really good. So I'm just gonna like put stop it here. Asika, God of the Tree. Asika, I think another five color deck. This one's interesting because you can go into Prismatic Bridge. So you can have like a pretty interesting Oath like deck, like Oath of Druids, I think, right? That's what it does. Uh, but you can upkeep, you flip until you flip into a creature or planeswalker, put it on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that you could do that. And it's also good that you can have your legendary creatures have vigils and add one mana. So like if we if we think mana is like kind of everything in CDH and like being able to play big spells and lots of mana's worth of like effect or whatever, having more mana is good, right? That's the short answer. So a Sika just turning your parents into like Birds of Paradise with the opportunity to flip into the Prismatic Bridge, you can probably get one top 16. Like I think it's already happened. We'll just leave it there. Kalia of the Vost. Okay, so this one, this one's like definitely top 16. Like we know like this is just like the Mardu Adnaz deck. You can cheat in demons, which is the important part because you can get like rune, what's it called? Rune something demon to like just demonic tutor. There's like another demon that matters. Anyways, you can just cheat a big dude in here. Um, And then like, oh, Razaketh. Yeah, you can do Razaketh in addition to like Adnaz stuff and within Mardu. So just generally good. I think one, maybe like top two top 16 a year at, at best for like this deck. Maybe you can win money, but like you would have to be the best like Kalia player and like the tournament's pretty small, but it'd be a good story. So, you know, I'd like to see you try. Uh, Prosper Tomebound. This one's definitely a CDH deck. We know that one. Prosper is like a really popular Rakdos deck. Just in general, at the beginning of end step, you exile top card, you can play it, and when you play something from exile, you make a treasure. So you can make treasures, you see more cards. Rakdos combo, pretty cool. Corval, we know this one's a CDH deck. The, fun the funny thing is like, <laughs> the conversation if it can win money or not because i think it won money but it did so in a way that that it was not great uh so we'll leave it at playable one top 16 a year and then once you can win money without cheating we'll put it over here <laughs> giada fauna ho this is a card all right giada is awesome rank number 19 um like so far the, all these commanders are pretty cool actually giada I made a deck tech a long time ago, actually. When Giada came out, uh, I made a deck tech for Giada for like a stack deck, of course, mono white. It's like angels, and then you play Helm of the Host on Giada, and like the the all the angels come in like way bigger. I don't think we're top 16ing. Maybe like one, but like there's gotta be some sort of like line we have to draw, right? Like if we're ha if we have Corval in here, I don't think Giada's like making it. So sorry. Fun deck though, if you like it. Um, Arcades, the strategist. Uh, this one, whenever a creature defender ETBs, you draw a card. Each creature control defender assigns combat damage equal toughness. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Uh, nah, nah. It's not even like so bad. It's good. It's just like nah. You can probably build some sort of bad combo deck to like loop your defenders to like draw cards infinitely. I don't know. There's Derevi. Like there's just. I don't think it's that funny. That's like the problem. Like the so bad it's good. It's gotta be something kind of weird about it. And the, technically, you can play defenders.
appears to draw cards and like slap people, right? It's only a sign. It can attack, yeah. Maybe, oh god, I'm talking myself into it. Oh no, oh no, this is this is quintessential so bad it's good. Like, <laughs> you can play defenders and attack people, so it's like actually kind of maybe like a, a bad control deck. And then um, you you play like cheap defenders who can act as like beaters and under like your control position, you just like beat people to death. No, no, we we talked ourselves into it. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> let's uh, move on to Nekusar, the Mind Razor. This was like this was like the terror of LGSs back in like 1994. <laughs> um, Nekusar is like the wheel commander, and like everyone hated Nekusar because there's no there's no cool way you can build it. Maybe there's like one person out there who has like the chill cool Nekusar deck that everyone loves. They're like, oh man, I love whenever they bring up the Nekusar deck. It's such a fun time. In most cases, it's not a fun time because all they do is wheel you and then like ping you to death, which is great for high power. Um, is it good for CDH? Look, we're in Grixis, right? So, so like, actually, I think any, like, most commanders who are in Grixis is just potentially one top 16. Nekusar does do one unique thing where uh, whenever an opponent draws a card, you just ping them. So it's, like, it's really good against the Ristic Mystic stuff. And I don't think, like, letting them draw an additional card is, like, that bad. Like, people are, the good decks are already drawing bajillion cards. So letting them have one more, like, is bad because, like, hey, your opponent's type card is bad. But, you know, you're paying them, right? So, like, if they want to play slow, you could actually, theoretically, be pretty good in this kind of meta. Yeah, let's say it's one top 16 playable. Muldrotha, the Grave Tide. Oh, this one. Talking about LGS pub stomp decks. There's no chill way to build this deck either. Uh, rank 22, Muldrotha. Like this dude, there's just like combos on combos. I think there's like a thing I remember. This one plays Dance of the of the Many or something like that. There's like one blue enchantment that's really good in this deck. Um, but you're just like Sultai, you have access to good cards. And then like you get to put stuff back from the graveyard. A little expensive, but like Jewel Lotus fixed that. So actually the fact that's pretty easy to cast, like Jewel Lotus Dark Ritual and stuff, pretty good. Uh, we're not going to stop it. This should be playable. So we'll put it in playable. Animar, Soul of the Elements. This one, one money. This actually just one. <laughs> um, Animar, I think Animar is like a kind of weird deck. Animar is like no, there's zero chill. Another like zero chill deck. It's always combos, right? And if it's not always combo, it's like always broken creature deck. Um, so it's like very strong and high power. And I think Animar for some reason has like this perception that's like not very good deck. But every time like there's a, an Animar player in some tournament, it definitely top 16s and it also just wins. I think people just don't respect this deck. It's very easy to combo off with like Animar. You use like Terror of the Peaks to like loop your creatures and like nuke the table. There's like lots of stuff you can do. So I think you win money with it. Ala Pilani nest tender so this one whatever and it gets cracked <laughs> uh you reveal and like cheat a creature nah this is stop it this is like straight up stop it you can make this like a stack stack and like cheat in stuff but just like so many hoops to jump through i'm like it's not cool that one all right chatterfang squirrel general there's a kid at my lgs who wants to make chatterfang work i think this is similar to lathril where you get to make creatures to feed your thing yeah this one just makes squirrels so as funny as it is it's like Almost so bad it's good, but it's also just not good. So we're at stop it. Henzi, Toolbox, Tori. Each creature spell you cast a mana value for a greater as Blitz. Blitz equals its mana cost. And then Blitz costs you pay, costs one less for each time you cast your commander. Okay, so this cheats big creatures. What can you do in ZH with this? You can probably cheat like a big demon, right? You can probably cheat like something. But you also have to cast your commander like multiple times. I don't know. I, I don't think it's like, there's just too many hoops for it to be like cute or like good. So I'm gonna put stop it. Omnath, Locus of Creation. This one is a CDH deck. It's not very good or like it hasn't performed super well, but it is good enough. Like you do like your general beach lines or like, or, or really like you play a meal do uh, dock side and then you just like blink your Omnath, draw your deck. That's kind of like what you do with this deck. I do like the fact that your all your fetch line gives you four mana. So like uh you actually get to put a lot of mana's worth of stuff to the battlefield and then not tap down your mana. That's basically it. And you can like blank Omnath infinitely to win. So probably like I'd like to see a top 16 once. I don't think so. But theoretically I think you can do it. If I can find the card. Oh, here it is. Yeah, playable. Marin of Clan Nel Toth. This is Alan's like favorite commander. Another like zero chill deck. Uh, I've seen people try to like play this in CDH. Uh, is it good? I don't think so. So I'm just gonna put in stop it. I just don't think it's a good deck. Ridden Siri, inseparable. Whenever you cast a dog, you make a cat. When you make a cat, you make a dog, and then it gets deals damage to any target you number of dogs controlling gain life. Oh no. Oh no. How many dog good dogs and cats are there? There can't be that many. 
Let me cast a dog spell. Ah, oh, I really want this to work because it's so cute and so funny, but I don't think it does. Uh, unplayable, but very cute. So there you go. Tesa Karlov. Uh, if a creature dies, you get another one of those. I think this is like very easy to try to get to top 16 with. I don't think anyone's cracked it. And the problem is Orzhov is like, is one of the pairs that just doesn't do well in CDH. It's like hard to like really build a good Orzhov deck. There's like a lot, a lot of people have tried. Tasa is like very good in high power or like just casual settings. Cause I've like, again, like Kesa, like many other decks on this list, it's just like, you can't build it with any chill. It's just like, uh, blood artist dot deck. I don't think it's good enough. It's not so bad. It's good. I just don't think it's good. I just don't think it's worth exploring. Sauron. Sauron, the Dark Lord. This one, I don't remember if it did win money. I think it did. So we'll put it over here. It's a Grixis deck. It's a Grixis storm deck. You make armies. You're, you're, whenever your opponent casts a spell, you make an orc. Like the orc gets bigger. It's hard to remove this dude because they have to sacrifice a legendary artifact or legendary creature. And then you get tempted. And then whenever the ring gets tempted, you can like draw four cards. This is kind of, kind of like crazy. It's like a good Grixis deck with like an interesting commander that actually does stuff that feeds off commander. Like this just seems like a really, really good card. So it win wins money. Brea. I don't know why Brea doesn't win money. Like, I think like Brea is like a very classic, again, high power borderline CDH deck that people have like built. Like this is a CDH deck. I've seen people do this. It just doesn't perform. I don't know why people don't play it. Maybe it's because it's like four, just like four colored pips is hard, but like there's also so much you can do with it. You can sacrifice two artifacts to like bolt someone. You can kill a creature. You can kill a Krom, I think. You can gain... The life gain doesn't matter as much. It might, might, it might matter if you're ad nauseing, but man, I feel like Brea has to be good. I think like I legit think it's, at least here, but I do think you win money with this. I don't think people respect it. I do think you would win money for sure. You have all the right colors. The land base is the hardest part. I think you can solve that pretty easily. If you can play like five color easily, I think you can play Rhea. Niv, Mizzet, Parun. All right, this is a hot take. I don't think this deck's good. Um, but it does top 16. So like you do, you do curiosity effects on this on this dude and you like just win the game. But I've just never seen Niv Mizzet like, I've seen Niv Mizzet do things, right? That's the thing. Niv Mizzet does things. Are the things good? They're okay. The problem is like, it's uncastable. Like to me, Brea is more castable than Niv Mizzet. Niv Mizzet, the only way you can cast it in, in blue red is like if you Dockside or if you drew a Lotus for the triple blue. Like I guess you can get all, all your blue lands and then like you also use your red rituals here. Niv Mizzet, it's just so much work to get to Niv Mizzet that I just don't think this deck is good. But it does top 16, so no, there you go. Captain, this guy. Horrors you control have menace. Menace, whenever a horror you control deals combat damage player, that player mills that many cards. At the beginning of your end step, choose target artifact in a thing and you get to put on your battlefield. Oh, that's kind of hot. <laughs> that's kind of hot. Okay, it's bad. All right, we'll, we'll put this, we'll start here. It's bad, but we do have Jewel Lotus. We do have Dark Ritual to cheat this dude out. And the reason why this is kind of hot is because you can swing, mill like a, a Kinnon player and then steal their creature. And I think that is the coolest thing you can do. If Kinnon wasn't like a legit deck right now and Kinnon is, I don't, I wouldn't put this dude here, but this is like Gaunti food chain levels of bad. That's good. We're gonna, <laughs> so please someone build this deck. Maybe I do it. That sounds so funny. I just want to steal someone's, someone's like big creature. Moving on, Gears and Starn. Um, Gears and Starn, one of the most popular commanders, like like 35, makes sense. Gears and Starn definitely one playable top 16 for sure. I think Gears and Starn is better than Div Mizzet. <laughs> um, whenever you deal one damage, Gears and Starn like adds two more damage to it. It's got Ward, it's a little slightly harder to move, very easy to get out. And just like if you play all the pingers, and I have a deck tech on this, like it, this dude just goes out of control. Another one of those like high power, like commander, casual commanders that just like has no chill. This is one of those. You just put a curiosity effect on your pingers, and then like just like Niv Mizzet, you just go off, right? Niv Mizzet actually wins you the game. Gears and Starn doesn't actually win you the game yet, but like it really gets you out there. So like, oh, I think this deck's good. I don't think it's win money good, but I think it's like playable or like one top 16. Alila, Heartful Provocateur. I like this card a lot. I remember when this first came out, I was like very excited about this. Other creatures you control flying get plus one plus oh. When you cast an artifact or a enchantment spell, make a one one. So it's got good colors. Esper is good colors. You got your science effects, you got your Thoracle Dockside, you got your Ad Nauseam, all that stuff. Whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment, you make a 1-1. One, one. So theoretically, I think like, or ideally, we'll put it and stop it first, all right? You're gonna play like what? Five, six rocks, one enchantment, two enchantments a game. So like that's eight, two, one uh, fairies over the course of like 
three or four turns. Is that good? I don't think so. Um, I do like the idea that if you could like play Hullbreaker Horror and like infinitely cast your 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 artifacts and then like take an extra turn and beat the table, that's like kind of cool. But like that's a lot of work. So I like the idea. I don't think it will ever. It could theoretically top 16 because you can always silence Oracle Dockside, but I don't think the commander does enough to like actually get the top. Like the commander's effect is not what's getting you to top 16. Sithis, I've seen this out there. I know this is a CDH deck. You loop enchantment is like very fast and kind of hard to disrupt. It's like not hard in the sense that you can just easily remove the Sithis, but like also they play a lot of stuff that protects their Sithis and it just goes off really, really quickly. So I would say Sithis is like definitely playable. I don't think it's win money good. Kirk. All right. I'll put it right there. All right. Kirk has one top 16. That's fine. I just don't like Kirk. I just don't like this deck. Um, you just like play your big black spells and pay life for it and then like, you combo off. There's actually a lot of lines. It's, like a, it's quite a complex deck to play. Um, I just don't like it. Uh, Queen Marchesa. Queen Marchesa, you become Monarch and then uh, upkeep you make, if an opponent is a Monarch, you make an Assassin. I've seen people try to build CH decks with this. I don't think Marchesa ever does anything by herself that matters to like the Mardu color. Like if you're winning off Marchesa, it's the same reason you're winning off a Leela. Just like you had the right card, like you have the right CH staples. The commander doesn't do anything. So we're just gonna like, just put it and stop it. Marchesa is really cool though, as a commander. So it does make sense that why they're so high up here. Oloro, Ageless, Ascetic. So bad it's good. Mono, mono white deck right here. Maybe one top 16, but I'm gonna put it in so bad it's good. It's just uh, the mod, the really funny version of this that Charles told me about is like, you leave him in the command zone. You just never like cast him. And it's a mono white deck. It's just really, really funny. You also just like get to draw an extra card on each of your turns. So it's like, I think it's playable as an Esper deck. It's probably fine. Um, you also gain life for your ad and all that stuff. But I think it's like so funny that I want to put so bad it's good. Aragorn the Uniter. Uh, Aragorn the Uniter. I have a deck tech on this. Aragorn the Uniter. Uh, whenever you play a white spell, you get a thing. Blue spell, you scry. Red spell, you bolt. Green spell, you pump. Um, this is a food chain deck. No, you're you're recasting scre uh, Squee. Yeah, to bolt the table to death. Theoretically, one play like you can probably hit a top sixteen just once. I'm not a big fan of it. All right next, rank forty two. Urza Lord High Artificer. Classic CDH deck. Just sacks the table, tap your window orb, and tap all your stuff. The problem is, I don't think Urza's good. Urza's certainly within CDH like power level and like play patterns, but I've just never seen Urza do well, like ever. You can win a game or two, but from like context of a whole tournament, it just takes forever for you to like get there. You just drag the game out and just draw all your games. So I think in top 16 still, I do not think you win money with this. Tivit, Seller of Secrets. This one's easy. This is clearly win money. Uh, tier right here. I think it has. You just time sieve, combo, all that. We don't need to talk about it. Tovalar, Dire Overlord. All right. Grohl is like unplayable in CDH. It's just extremely hard to play Grohl. You can play, uh, what's that? Rurik Thar. Yeah, Rurik Thar I think is the closest thing. Maybe uh, also Minsken Boo. You have like a Protein Hulk. Like you have a Hulk deck there. But yeah, Tovalar is like, I think whenever your werewolves and wolves steal combat damage to play, you draw a card. This is like a super loose deck. It's like not good. I have a deck list on this. I tried building this as a deck. I think it's just stop it. It's almost so bad it's good. Maybe we'll put it in so bad it's good. I like the fact that it has werewolves. <laughs> it's a bad deck, but it's so bad it's kind of funny. Satoru Omizawa. So Satoru Umezawa is blue black, which is good, you know, good colors. And then you can cheat stuff. So each creature in your hand has ninjutsu four. So you can just like ninjutsu, you can ninjutsu a Jinka Taxis. So I think that's what it did. And I've seen, I've seen a deck top, top 16 with Satoru. So Sisei, whether like captain, I'm surprised how low Sisei is. I feel like Sisei should be much higher. Like a lot of casual players will play him. Um, Sisei is win money tier. Like Sisei has won money. So we're just put, put it like that. I don't, I need to understand why Sisei still like is extra good or like good these days. I feel like Sisei hasn't been really good for a really long time. The deck lists that I see like just don't make sense to me. Like they make sense from the sense that like they do Sisei things and like I understand why they're there. But like, I just don't understand how the cards are interacting on meta in a way that gives it an advantage. I guess we'll like look into it more, but 
Yeah, wins money. That's all I gotta say. Yerok the Desecrated. This one, if a permanent enters a battlefield, you get like another ETB. This is like very uncool at the LGS level. There's like no cool way to build it, but for some reason, there's no cool way to build it in CDH either. Uh, Zaxera the Exemplary. This one is pretty interesting. So this one, I actually built this a long time ago as a CDH deck too. You could potentially get one six top 16. The thing is like you free from the real Zaxera and you just win the game. You make infinitely large, like you get infinite mana off of a single free from the real, draw your deck or something. There's just very easy to make infinite mana. The problem is getting to your out, but because you're in soul tie, you have all the black tutors. So it should be pretty easy. Jetmere next is a Revels. We know this dude. We know this fat cat. It's like a stack deck, makes your creatures bigger. The more, it gives more effects based on how many creatures you have on the battlefield. I think Ian has won with this once a long time ago, but is it going to happen again? And is it, and can a not Ian person do it? I don't think so. It's probably good enough for a top 16 though. Yeah, we're just going to find the fat cat and throw him up there. Yeah, I think Jetmere is like one top 16. Urza Chief Artificer. This one's a really cool one. This one has affinity for artifact creatures. Artifact creatures have Menace. And at the beginning of your end step, you create a Urza. I think it's called Karnstruct. <laughs> okay, so at a, I played the pre-con for this. And this dude's really, really powerful. It gets out of control really, really fast. And I think if you build a high power level, there's like actually quite a a good deck. I don't know if you could top 16 it with it though. I think it's like so bad it's good. I think it's interesting. Like it's worthwhile to try I think. Xur the Enchanter. This is like the former CDH like tier 1 deck. You just find like Necropotence and then just draw a bajillion cards and then like you play a, a, a Shimmer Mirror and then like flash it and everything. So now we have Born Upon a win and stuff like that. I think Xur has a little bit more attention to it. Definitely playable. Definitely can win something. Urtet, Remnant of Memnarch. Whenever you cast a mirror, you get a 1-1, one, one, but you get combat on top of each mirror. Wooberg, put 3 plus 1 on each mirror control. I don't think it's playable. Let's just put it out there. I'll just stop it right there. Attracts a Grand Unifier. This one is a CDH deck. This one's like a tier 1 CDH deck. So this win money tier for sure. Yeah, you just like food chain or like have Displace or Kitten, Thoracal Console, all that stuff. You have science effects, you're calling the weak, or not, you have calling ritual. It's just Jewel Lotus. This deck's like good. Um, Najila, Blade Blossom easy you can win money with this um ac tier uh tyrant of gyre straight i don't know if we can win money this one um this is played in tatiova but i don't think you play it by itself why would you ever play it by itself you can play this pretty quickly you can play additional lands and you draw a card i don't know maybe maybe i think you just play tatiova canon is win money tier if there's like a, a tier that wins more money like win more money i think that's canon that's Kinnon. That's how that's how good Kinnon is, like right now. This is like winning some money, this is winning all money. <laughs> so if I were you, I would play the win all money tier. That's my hot take. Or that's my rec that's my pro recommendation. Play the win all money tier. Lisa Shroud of Dusk. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose two life. This is good, like this is good anti-storm tech, but pretty easy to get around. We'll just play stop it right here. Just not a good deck. Magda. Magda is definitely playable. Can Magda win money? Potentially. I think people are exploring Magda a little bit more again to like win more money. I know that they have win money, but will they win money again? Potentially. Yeah, okay. You know what? I can leave it up here. I can see Magda being that good. Um, Just like monocolor, you, just good to treasures. Very easy to like find answers to like stop your opponents easily and then like combo out. I don't know. I think Magda is just also really fast. So kind of everything you like. Uh, Kaikar wins Fury. I've seen people do try to do Siege before with this. Whenever you cast an Unconnected Spell, you make a 1-1 Spirit, a Sacrament Spirit, add red. Just guy used to be like really not good. Is it better now? I think so. Is it good enough? Is this card good enough for a top 16? I don't think so. If it's like a top 16, it's like once a decade. <laughs> top 16. <laughs> The first sliver. This, it's wild how far this has fallen. This used to be like, I remember when this first came out, there was like, I forgot which deck was, there was another five color commander that came out at the time. Tazri, Food Chain Tazri, I think? No, someone else. Food Chain, like Tazri used to be the Food Chain commander. Then there was another commander that came out for like, a, oh, it was Niv. It was five color Niv. That Niv, five color Niv was like uh, the the new food chain commander because then you have five colors and then like the first sliver came out right afterwards and that just took over everything. And then people just stopped playing this. Is definitely top 16 like viable? Is it win money tier? I feel like you should be able to win money with this. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, five colors. Food chain's like not a great 
align, I think, but like you have access to all the good cards. So theoretically, if you're like a good player, to me, it just seems like as viable as the rest of these decks. Uh, Omnath, Locus of Awe, another five color commander. If you lose unspent mana, but that mana becomes black instead at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, look at top card of your library, and then you can put that card. It has three or more symbols in its cost. You, you reveal it, you add three mana, and then you put it in your hand. If you don't, you just put it in your hand. All right, it's a lot of work. Basically, it just draws you a card. That's all it does. Sometimes it gives you mana. This dude just gives you a lot of mana. All right, hot take. I think it went money with this. Five color, so that means like you have access to all the good cards. And this dude just like lets this, this bean also just lets you like bank black mana. That's pretty powerful. I don't think it's more powerful than like, I don't know necessarily some other things but you know it has all the qualities to make it good it's not as good as najula like that's for certain but i think he win money so that's all that that's all this tier list cares about uh scarab god all right scarab god classic commander at beginning of your upkeep each opponent loses x life you scry x when the x number of zombies you control you can exile creature card from a graveyard create a token copy of it and it's a zombie all right hot take hot take hot take i think this is like so bad it's good um same reason why the the horror captain is like uh playable or like so bad it's good it's like there's just so much bad card like there's so much big creature cards out there floating around that when someone in that inevitably like gets their uh i don't know void window or countered or whatever or destroyed or like there's a bunch of creatures in the graveyard the scarab god awaits <laughs> you know you just power the scarab god uh he's not dying anytime soon you just like start stealing creatures spend that mana get a 4-4 zombie and then like you also just get to scry and maybe we'll lose life it's not good but also like it's so not good but it has like one little weird thing you can do that it's good <laughs> okay morophon the boundless this one i'm surprised morophon's rank 63 i thought morophon would be like much higher rank just like every typo deck that wants to cheat like a five color deck plays this right which is why i don't like this card I actually really don't like morphon because anytime you build like typo deck or kindred deck morphon's there to like make it five color i just don't like the fact that this exists Thali of the git rock monster this one surprised didn't do very well when it first got revealed i thought it was very interesting you can play additional land it has the git rock part it has uh the thalia part of saxing creatures and non, non lands um and whenever it attacks you can sacrifice a creature or land and draw a card right it's got everything stapled onto this card I think Absan is just like not really good. I think your win cons are kind of bad. Uh, but all the all the words are right though. So like maybe this is like Thalia bias, which is a good bias to have. I would put one one top 16. I think you'd be able to like if you're a really good player, I think you, you can definitely do that. Tom Bombadil. All right. As long as there are four more lore counters among sagas you control, uh, Hex is indestructible. And then whenever a saga resolves, you flip into another saga and put it on the battlefield. All right. This is like, this is just unplayable. All right. Done. Zolodok. Void Gor Gorger. <laughs> Color spells with value seven or greater of Cascade, Cascade. So bad it's good. <laughs> um, it's like a stack stack. And then like if you, I like the idea that you can stack the table with all the artifact stuff. Cause you also have all the artifacts to cheat out. Like this Basalt, Monolith, Thran Dynamo, all that stuff. You you play a God Pharaoh statue really quickly. You play like a Trinisphere, Graph Digger's Cage, all the stuff. And then afterwards you just slam an Ulamog and flip into it like two other things. It's really funny. I don't think it's good, but it's really, really funny. And I want to see it happen. Miracle Lord of Bones. As long as your life total is less than or equal to half your star Oda, indestructible, who cares? Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile. If you do, make a copy of it. Except it's an enchantment and lose all the card types. Eh, interesting, but not playable. I don't like it. Siddhar Jabari of Zalfir. Whenever you attack one or more knights, uh, you can draw a card so you loot. Whenever deals come out as your player, return, return target knight card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Interesting, but is not good good colors i can think of a couple of knights you might want to put in a deck but just doesn't do enough for you to like do something with it you you could theoretically doomsday and then like attack and then like crack the doomsday like that so you know that is a doomsday deck nah okay not good hinata i know has been tried as a seed age deck i just don't see ever happening um spells you cast cost one less for each target and then spells your opponents cost one more for each target yeah like i've seen people try it's just not very good marchese Mar the original marchese the black rose ironically i think this one is like one top 16 
like at least Grixis, uh, the dethrone ability is relevant whenever, and also the part where whenever a creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on dies, you bring it back on the next end step. So like with a Goblin Bombardment, you could just like do a lot of funky stuff with Marchesa. Like you can sacrifice your Fimage, get another Dockside, sacrifice it, and then like it keeps going back, right? Oh, he had to get, find a way to give it plus one plus one counter. Okay, well, I mean, there's like ways to like do that, I think. I think just the fact that you're in Grixis and there's like some supplemental value to the commander, probably playable. Are you winning money? Probably not, but playable. Panlaza, the Sun Favored, we just did a deck tech for this for a top 16 list. So that one's pretty simple, right? That one's a top 16 list, um, which is pretty cool. Frodo and Sam. This is an Abzan deck. Uh, whenever I've like, this pre-con's really powerful, by the way. Is it a good commander deck? Or as a good siege deck, whenever attacks gain three life, and then you just draw cards, and this one gives you food tokens. I don't know. Like I think if we're putting Thalia, I think Thalia is better than this. So I'm just gonna like just say that it's stop it. It's cute though. It's a good. It's a it's a fun casual deck, but I don't think you can play in CDH. Winota Joiner Forces. Um, this one was the hotness, and then the hotness fell off. I think this is more than one top 16 a year. Can you win money? Ooh, I don't know about that one. Probably, but not as consistently as the other decks. Sephiris of the Hidden Ways. Whenever... I love this commander, by the way. I, I have the pre-con for this, and I played a couple times. Really fun deck. Whenever one or more creature cards to put in your graveyard from anywhere, you venture. Um, and then whenever you complete a dungeon, you return a creature card from your graveyard battlefield. I think Sephiroth actually someone top 16 with it. I want to look into it, but I think like there's probably enough stuff you could do to make this like a really good com uh, commander. Are you winning money? Probably not. Are you having a good time? Definitely. Lord Windgrace. All right. The OG like Jun commander. This is not the OG Jun commander. There's other Jun commanders, but this one's really popular when when like Lord Windgrace came out. I don't think it's CH playable. It's not even going to read the words. I just know that it's not. <laughs> Light paws. This one is CH playable. I've seen people play it. Is it good? No, it's just debatable. Is it gonna top 16? Probably. If you know what it does, whenever an aura ATP is under your control, if you cast it, you can look for another aura with the same mana value or with mana value less than, yeah, or equal to with a different name than the aura you control attached to the light pause. So I actually don't know how this works. I don't know how light pause wins. I just know light pause does. So just kill light pause. <laughs> That's the problem with light pause. Light pause is dice. Unlike, unlike Sithis, where Sithis has like a lot of draw engines because of green and also has put ways to protect himself. Light Paws is just like, I have no idea how you do it, but you can probably do it. Rafine, Scheming Seer, hot take. I think this is a really good deck. I actually built a Rafine deck on my Patreon that you can look at. Um, I also played an MTGO game with Rafine and just like won that game really easily. So I think Rafine's really, really good. Uh, Orcish Bowmaster does make this card a lot worse, but you can do like a lot of really cool stuff with Rafine and it's also in like kind of good colors. So probably one top 16 a year. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I can. Nah. <laughs> but good card. Varen, Voice of Duality. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery, you put a plus one plus like this this dude gets plus one plus one. Whenever you cast or copy instant sorcery spell, cause the trigger, you get another trigger. So your uh treasure dude, the the dwarf stormkill artist gets another treasure. Is it is it a good is it deck? Is it? I don't think so. Um, it's not better than Gears of the Star, that's for sure. It's cool though. I really like this card. I really like this card in, in Commander, uh, in general for casual. I, I'll put this in as many decks as, as I can, but not against CDH. Feather the Redeemed. So bad it's good. This is like quintessential so bad it's good. I've seen people try this a long time ago. People like will always try Feather the Redeemed in CDH. Uh, it's just not good. You are at like the, the Orsov levels of like bad in CDH, but even worse because there's no tutors. Sorry. Bellacore the Dark Master. Grixis, so probably already good. Whenever ETB is, you draw X and lose X equal number of demons you control. How many demons are there in, in Commander? That's good. I don't know about that one. Whenever another demon ETBs, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. This might be the first Grixis deck that has to stop it. I just don't know how... The problem is like, you you could build a good Grixis deck, but you can't play Adnos. So what demons are we putting in here? I don't know. And it's also kind of... It's not that expensive. We can definitely do it in Grixis. So it's either so bad it's good or stop it. And I think I would leave it stop it. Shieldred the Apocalypse. All right. Shieldred... Is, has been explored a lot in CDH because really uh, they're really good against like risk studies and stuff and like draw effects. Um, just like paying life and you gain life so you can stay in the game longer. Shieldred as a commander, if I put, uh, where where is he? Kirk? Yeah, 
I think Shodra's worse than Kurt. That's like pretty easy to say. So I think it just stop it. Uh, Marinar. Okay. Ooh, I think this one's so bad is good. I love Marinar. All rats have fear. Sacrifice a rat. Make that many rats. Uh, equal to uh, where X is the number of rats you control. It's like Cranko. Basically like Cranko, except you're black. So I think you will play like waste not a lot of discard effects and then play all the rats that like force your opponents to discard. So then like your table discard. So you get a lot of like effect back so like if you're able to play a rat force a table discard and waste not draw a bunch of cards and make a bunch of mana and then like make a bunch of rats and you have a fear rats 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 <laughs> you should i want to build this deck that sounds awesome so i think it's so bad it's good joda archmage eternal this one is a wooberg deck that sucks all right next uh zia tora this joda had like a really big glow up in the unifier, just saying. Zeotora, the incinerator. John, at beginning your end step, you may attack on a creature, deals damage equal to the power, to any target, create tree, treasure tokens. Ooh, the treasure part does make it interesting. I think it's bad though. I think John's just bad. On Hello the Painter, this one I was very surprised by. When I first saw this commander, it was first instant sorcery you cast has casualty two, and then you like copy it, right? Yeah, you just copy that spell. This just seems like it's like cracked Grixis commander. No one plays it though, so I think that's why it just doesn't hit top 16. It just has all the right cards and like right things go for it going. I'm pretty certain you can like top 16 with it if you're like the on Hilo person. Magus Lucas King. At the beginning of your combat or your turn, pull a plus one encounter on target creature, and then you can tap to add colorless, and then it goes to X. Yeah, this is not playable. Like you can probably do stuff with it, just too much words to describe. Area of the Charmed Apple. I have a deck tech on this one. Casual though. Um, Ariad is each creature that's in chamber and aura can't attack you at a beginning end step. Each opponent loses X light and you, and you gain X light where X is the number of auras you control. This sounds like a really cool prison deck. I'm just gonna say like, I think it's so bad it's good. Like, I don't think it's playable. <laughs> but the, the fact that you're like charming everyone and like draining everyone of their life and you can like stack them that way. I don't know. Like, it sounds kind of hot. I think it's bad though. So it's so bad it's good. Marnius Calgar is a real deck. This one's a top 16 for sure. I don't think it's winning money though. Whenever one or more tokens ETB, you draw a card, tap six, make two Astartes Warrior creature tokens with vigilance. Uh, because he's a chapter master. Marnius Calgar, Warhammer voice. Yeah, you just like make infinite mana, make infinite dudes draw your deck, and then win. Pretty simple. And you're in, you're Esper, so it's like good. I'm surprised Brago is down here. Brago is like classic old school like stacks deck that everyone hates. I guess that's why they're like rank 89. I thought like old school commanders would like make it there long, like would be higher on the list. I think Brago is bad. It's not even so bad it's good. I think it's just bad. Like there is a CH deck, but I'd rather like, I'd rather play Gears in the Star and like Muldrotha and like, I don't know what other little Sephiris than play Brago. I think Brago is just not good. Turgrid. Oh, Turgrid. My hot take is that Turgrid should be banned. But actually like people just stop playing Turgrid. So like, let's not ban it. You know, let's not add more banned cards to the list. There's nothing cool we can do with Turgrid in casual. And in, in CDH, it's almost so bad it's good because you like force people to sacrifice their stuff, but you like, you legitimately can't win. So I think like it's just stop it. Ramos Dragon Engine, I think it's a stop it here too. Just whenever you cast a spell, put a plus one one counter and you remove a bunch of counters and then you like add mana. Yeah, let's, let's not deal with that. Dihada Binder of Wills. This one wins money and I'm pretty sure you can like actually win a tournament with this too. So this one, like I don't necessarily remember what the way is to win with this commander. I think it's like, there's like a, uh, underworld breach line with this where you just like make a lot of treasures by the second ability where you like dump a lot of stuff in the graveyard and make a bunch of treasures and then i don't know how you like flicker this but there is a way for you to loop this with with uh, underworld breach so it did pretty well i think so probably can win money obika brute chronologist grixis uh, I think it's so bad it's good. Like this was really popular when it first came out because you could like use your you can use your final fortunes as like a time walk because you could just end the turn and not die to the the ET like the end of turn trigger the, the delay trigger. I don't know. It's probably like one top sixteen actually. Sir Gwyn, I love this card. I actually made a really cool high power list a long time ago, a really long time ago. That has like a bunch of combos in it. It has the Hakon combo in there. There's like a Gravestorm combo. It's a good. I think it's like a Fat Timna in Mardu 
and you have to like equip creatures. I think it's so bad it's good. I think it's kind of interesting. It's like my bias. Finn the Fangberry. This one, I actually thought this would be more popular. I think this one's really popular on Arena for Brawl because it's just like, whenever every creature you control death touch deals combat damage to a player, they get two poison counters. So really good at Brawl. Here, unplayable. Um, not unplayable. You could probably kill one person. I'd be very impressed if you can kill a table. Uh, with this. Almost so bad it's good. <laughs> Orvar, the all form. This one's a deck. This one's a CDH deck. Uh, this one copies like, uh, there's one coveted jewel. You just like play a lot of twiddle effects and then like copy coveted jewel and draw cards and keep twiddling. Keep twiddling yourself in front of everyone and then like win the game. So probably one top 16. Dina Stole Steeper. Uh, this one has a combo in there. Is it good? I don't know. Like whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life for turn. I think you play Sanguine Bond with this or the other one of them. One of those black enchantments like combos off with Dina. And then you can also use Dina to crack a Protein Hulk. So yeah, sure. I'll give you one top 16. Kess, funnily enough, top 16, but not win money tier. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe if you're like really good at Kess, you could do it. But I don't see that many good Kess players. So it's, she's back down here, which is really sad. Kess has just always been so powerful in, in Commander and like just like playable. But I don't know. Something about Kess. I think you just might as well do Rock's Eye. You might as well like play Sauron. <laughs> <laughs> then play like boring old cast who can double tainted pack which just sounds really good all right last two volo guide to monsters whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type that you control or one in graveyard you copy that spell you double things which is kind of neat i don't know what you double though so put down over here anawan the ruin thief this is like worse yuriko but could you top 16 whenever one or more rogues you control deal common damage player that player builds a card and for each one damage dealt to them and if they mill at least one creature card, you draw a card. You can play a lot of rogues. I think it's so bad, it's good. That's the whole list. All right, so here is our tier list now that we're done. I'm actually very surprised by like, I don't know how many cards I put into the playable tier. I thought like nothing would be here. I thought it would just be like everything to stop it. But I'm like pretty decently impressed that like there's a bunch of cards that you can play from that list that you could probably top 16 and make a half decent CDH deck. I was also impressed by how many cards are here as well. I like just didn't think there'd be that many commanders that I would consider to be like win money tier. I don't know the more like when we look at it, it's like there's a lot of options. So I guess that like goes to show that you could do a lot in CDH, especially like down here. This was I'm not not surprised by. I thought like I'll have more cards here. And then the so bad it's good tier. That that is a uh, very very uh exciting to see actually. I kind of want to build a list for all of these. Like maybe that's what we do. Like let's let's do a series where we just like build a deck for all of these and like try and play them cuz I feel like they're so bad. <laughs> they're so awful. But they're kind of exciting, right? Like you really want to see what happens. So uh maybe we do that. I think that's a good idea. Maybe not Rin and Siri though. Rin and Siri either. You can't do it. Okay, so that's the tier list. Pleasantly surprised, pretty fun exercise. Let me know which deck you want me to build. I think it's rats, rats, rats. Uh, you can tell me what you're interested in and leave a comment in the comment section below what you thought about the video and a nice comment. I don't know, say good bot or something. Okay, don't forget to subscribe and subscribe to my Patreon, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.